All right, everyone, welcome back. We are going to dive right into this camera basics tutorial number one. So grab your coffee and let's dive in to the exposure triangle. <laughs> So first off, what is exposure? I'm sure that you've probably heard photographers or videographers say that a shot is overexposed or underexposed, but what does that mean? Well, it really just means that things are too bright or too dark. Overexposed would mean it was being exposed to too much light and underexposed means that there was not enough light for the shot. So there are three parts that make up this exposure triangle. The triangle is composed of your shutter speed, your aperture, and your ISO. Let's get started with shutter speed. Let's say that this uh, card box is your sensor. This is what captures all the information in your camera to take a photo or a video. Let's say this credit card knife is your shutter. So the shutter speed is going to be the amount of time that this opens to allow light to come through the lens and hit the actual camera sensor and to process that information. So the longer that this is open, the more light is hitting it and the faster it opens and closes, the less light is hitting it. We will dive into why you want to have faster shutters and slower shutters in a different tutorial. But for right now, we're gonna keep it simple and just uh, have you understand that the longer your shutter speed is open, say one tenth of a second, it's going to allow more light. You put it to one over 250, then it's going to open and close super fast. Now let's look at aperture. Aperture is going to be the size of the hole on the lens, okay? So light is going to pass through the lens and hit the camera sensor. So let's grab our camera sensor again, and we'll just use my hand as the aperture. So this is your lens, right? And inside of every lens, you have something that looks a lot like a pupil. It can dilate, it gets larger and smaller, and allows more and less light in. Something to keep in mind with aperture that I know confused me when I was getting started was that the lower the number, the larger the hole. You have to think of it like a fraction. So this I'm shooting on right now is a 2.8. It's a 16 millimeter 2.8 lens. The aperture is 2.8. Now that means that is the widest open that it can go. So if I wanna increase the size of that hole to get to the sensor, the largest it can go is to a setting at 2.8. Here I have a Sony A6000. Anything that you shoot with, the exposure triangle will be a part of it. So let's look, see if you can see the inside of this camera opening and closing as I am making the aperture smaller and larger. So at F22, which is the uh, smallest that this aperture can get, that hole is tiny. And as I go all the way over to F3.5, that aperture opens up. It looks a lot like a pupil dilating and undilating. Is that a word? I don't know. You get it. Now the third and final part of your exposure triangle is going to be your ISO. So with ISO, you can add fake light. Think of ISO as in search of. You're in search of more light, but you can't find it. There's nothing you can do to create more light at the setting to get it right in the camera. So with ISO, you wanna be really careful because the higher up in the ISO you go, depending on the camera that you have, the more noisy your image and your video will be. What do I mean by noisy? That's that grain that you see, or sometimes there's a, it's not the blur, but it's just very grainy. It doesn't have that nice sharp image that you want. So here's one quick rule of thumb. As you're setting up for the shot, set your ISO to the lowest it will go. For this camera, it's 100. I'm going to then set my shutter speed and my aperture and if I don't have enough light still, I will start to bump up that ISO slowly until I have that properly exposed shot. This way it's going to reduce the amount of noise that I have in the image and I know that I'm not producing more noise than I need to. So that's it, that's the exposure triangle. In short, if you have any questions, please let me know down below. I will be diving into when you want your shutter speeds at certain speeds, when you want your aperture at different settings. So I hope this video was helpful for anybody thinking about getting into photography or videography. Keep in mind that those are two very separate things. So shutter speed is going to be very different for photography than videography. So be careful messing with your shutter speed as you're going for videos. We will talk about that in a later tutorial. But for now, it's important to know the three parts of the exposure triangle, shutter speed, aperture, ISO, 
So if you like this video, and I really hope you did, I would really appreciate it if you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, smash that bell that's next to it, and leave a comment down below uh, what uh, potentially helped you or what you thought of this tutorial, or what tutorials you would like to see in the future. All right, everyone, peace.